Magical realism, magic realism, or marvelous realism is a style of fiction that paints a realistic view of the modern world while also adding magical elements. It is sometimes called fabulism, in reference to the conventions of fables, myths, and allegory. Magical realism, perhaps the most common term, often refers to fiction and literature in particular, with magic or the supernatural presented in an otherwise real world or mundane setting. The terms are broadly descriptive rather than critically rigorous. Matthew Strecker defines magic realism as what happens when a highly detailed, realistic setting is invaded by something too strange to believe? Many writers are categorized as magical realists, which confuses the term and its wide definition. Irene Gunther tackles the German roots of the term, and how art is related to literature. Magical realism is often associated with Latin American literature, particularly authors including genre founders Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Miguel Ángel Asturias, Jorge Luis Borges, Elena Garro, Juan Rolfo, Romulo Gallegos, and Isabel Allende. In English literature, its chief exponents include Salman Rushdie, Alice Hoffman, and Nick Joaquin. Etymology While the term magical realism first appeared in English in 1955, the term magische realismus, translated as magic realism, was first used by German art critic Franz Roh in 1925 to refer to a painterly style also known as Neue Sachlichkeit, the new objectivity, an alternative to expressionism championed by fellow German museum director Gustav Hartlaub. ROH identified magic realism's accurate detail, smooth photographic clarity, and portrayal of the magical nature of the rational world. It reflects the uncanniness of people and our modern technological environment. ROH believed that magic realism was related to, but distinct from, surrealism, due to magic realism's focus on the material object and the actual existence of things in the world, as opposed to surrealism's more cerebral, psychological and subconscious reality. Magic realism was later used to describe the uncanny realism by American painters such as Ivan Albright, Peter Bloom, Paul Cadmus, Gray Foy, George Tooker and Viennese-born Henry Kerner, along other artists during the 1940s and 1950s. However, in contrast with its use in literature, magic realist art does not often include overtly fantastic or magical content, but rather looks at the mundane through a hyper-realistic and often mysterious lens. German magic realist paintings influenced the Italian writer Massimo Bontempelli, who has been called the first to apply magic realism to writing, aiming to capture the fantastic, mysterious nature of reality. In 1926 he founded the magic realist magazine 900, Novacento, and his writings influenced Belgian magic realist writers Johan Dane and Hubert Lampeau. Rose magic realism also influenced writers in Hispanic America, where it was translated as Realism Magico in 1927. Venezuelan writer Arturo Usla Pietri, who had known Bontempelli, wrote influential magic realist short stories in the 1930s and 40s that focused on the mystery and reality of how we live. Luis Leal attests that Pietri seemed to have been the first to adopt the term realism magico in Hispanic America in 1948. There is evidence that Mexican writer Elena Garro used the same term to describe the works of E. T. A. Hoffman but dismissed her own work as a part of the genre. French-Russian-Cuban writer Alejo Carpentier, who rejected Rowe's magic realism as tiresome pretension, developed his related concept Lo Real Maravilloso, or Marvelous Realism, in 1949. Maggie Ann Bowers writes that marvelous realist literature and art expresses the seemingly opposed perspectives of a pragmatic, practical and tangible approach to reality and an acceptance of magic and superstition. 
Within an environment of differing cultures, the term magical realism, as opposed to magic realism, first emerged in the 1955 essay, "'Magical Realism in Spanish-American Fiction' by critic Angel Flores in reference to writing that combines aspects of magic realism and marvelous realism. While Flores named Jorge Luis Borges as the first magical realist, he failed to acknowledge either Carpentier or Pietri for bringing Rose magic realism to Latin America. Borges is often seen as a predecessor of magical realists, with only Flores considering him a true magical realist. After Flores's essay, there was a resurgence of interest in marvelous realism, which, after the Cuban Revolution of 1959, led to the term magical realism being applied to a new type of literature known for matter of fact portrayal of magical events. Literature Characteristics The extent to which the characteristics below apply to a given magic realist text varies. Every text is different and employs a smattering of the qualities listed here. However, they accurately portray what one might expect from a magic realist text. Topic: <laughs> Fantastical elements. Magical realism portrays fantastical events in an otherwise realistic tone. It brings fables, folk tales, and myths into contemporary social relevance. Fantasy traits given to characters, such as levitation, telepathy, and telekinesis, help to encompass modern political realities that can be phantasmagorical. <laughs> <laughs> Real-world setting The existence of fantasy elements in the real world provides the basis for magical realism. Writers do not invent new worlds but reveal the magical in this world, as was done by Gabriel Garcia Marquez who wrote the seminal work of the style, 100 Years of Solitude. In the world of magical realism, the supernatural realm blends with the natural, familiar world. Authorial <laughs> reticence <laughs> 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 Authorial reticence is the deliberate withholding of information and explanations about the disconcerting fictitious world. The narrator is indifferent, a characteristic enhanced by this absence of explanation of fantastic events. The story proceeds with logical precision, as if nothing extraordinary had taken place. Magical events are presented as ordinary occurrences, therefore, the reader accepts the marvelous as normal and common. Explaining the supernatural world or presenting it as extraordinary would immediately reduce its legitimacy relative to the natural world. The reader would consequently disregard the supernatural as false testimony. Plenitude. <inaudible> <inaudible> In his essay, The Baroque and the Marvelous Real, Cuban writer Alejo Carpentier defined the Baroque by a lack of emptiness, a departure from structure or rules, and an extraordinary abundance plenitude of disorienting detail, citing Mondrian as its opposite. From this angle, Carpentier views the Baroque as a layering of elements, which translates easily into the post-colonial or transcultural Latin American atmosphere that he emphasizes in the kingdom of this world, America, a continent of symbiosis, mutations. Mester's age, engenders the Baroque. Made explicit by elaborate Aztec temples and associative Nahuatl poetry. These mixing ethnicities grow together with the American Baroque. The space in between is where the marvelous real is seen. Marvelous, not meaning beautiful and pleasant, but extraordinary, strange, and excellent. Such a complex system of layering 
encompassed in the Latin American boom novel, such as One Hundred Years of Solitude, aims towards translating the scope of America. Topic: <laughs> Hybridity. Magical realism plot lines characteristically employ hybrid multiple planes of reality that take place in inharmonious arenas of such opposites as urban and rural, and western and indigenous. Topic: <laughs> Metafiction. This trait centers on the reader's role in literature. With its multiple realities and specific reference to the reader's world, it explores the impact fiction has on reality, reality on fiction and the reader's role in between. As such, it is well suited for drawing attention to social or political criticism. Furthermore, it is the tool paramount in the execution of a related and major magic realist phenomenon, textualization. This term defines two conditions. First, where a fictitious reader enters the story within a story while reading it, making them self-conscious of their status as readers. And secondly, where the textual world enters into the reader's real world. Good sense would negate this process but magic is the flexible convention that allows it. Topic: <laughs> Heightened awareness of mystery. Something that most critics agree on is this major theme. Magic realist literature tends to read at an intensified level. Taking 100 years of solitude, the reader must let go of pre-existing ties to conventional exposition, plot advancement, linear time structure, scientific reason, etc., to strive for a state of heightened awareness of life's connectedness or hidden meanings. Louis Leal articulates this feeling as to seize the mystery that breathes behind things", and supports the claim by saying a writer must heighten his senses to the point of «estado limite», translated as «limit state» or «extreme» in order to realize all levels of reality, most importantly that of mystery. <laughs> Political critique Magic realism contains an implicit criticism of society, particularly the elite. Especially with regard to Latin America, the style breaks from the inarguable discourse of privileged centers of literature. This is a mode primarily about and for eccentrics, the geographically, socially, and economically marginalized. Therefore, magic realism's alternative world works to correct the reality of established viewpoints like realism, naturalism, modernism. Magic realist texts, under this logic, are subversive texts, revolutionary against socially dominant forces. Alternatively, the socially dominant may implement magical realism to disassociate themselves from their «power discourse». Theo de Hayen calls this change in perspective «decentering». In his review of Gabriel Garcia Marquez' novel Chronicle of a Death Foretold, Salman Rushdie argues that the formal experiment of magic realism allows political ideas to be expressed in ways which might not be possible through more established literary forms. El realism magical Magic realism, at least as practiced by Marquez, is a development out of surrealism that expresses a genuinely third world consciousness. It deals with what Naipaul has called, "...half-made," societies, in which the impossibly old struggles against the appallingly new, in which public corruptions and private anguishes are somehow more garish and extreme than they ever get in the so-called, "...north," where centuries of wealth and power have formed thick layers over the surface of what's really going on. In the works of Marquez, as in the world he describes, impossible things happen constantly, and quite plausibly, out in the open under the midday sun. <laughs> 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 
Topic Origins. Literary magic realism originated in Latin America. Writers often traveled between their home country and European cultural hubs, such as Paris or Berlin, and were influenced by the art movement of the time. Cuban writer Alejo Carpentier and Venezuelan Arturo Usla Pietri, for example, were strongly influenced by European artistic movements, such as Surrealism, during their stays in Paris in the 1920s and 1930s. One major event that linked painterly and literary magic realisms was the translation and publication of Franz Rowe's book into Spanish by Spain's Revista de Occidente in 1927, headed by major literary figure José Ortega y Gasset. Within a year, magic realism was being applied to the prose of European authors in the literary circles of Buenos Aires. Jorge Luis Borges inspired and encouraged other Latin American writers in the development of magical realism, particularly with his first magical realist publication, Historia Universal de la Infamia in 1935. Between 1940 and 1950, magical realism in Latin America reached its peak, with prominent writers appearing mainly in Argentina. The theoretical implications of visual arts magic realism greatly influenced European and Latin American literature. Italian Massimo Bontempelli, for instance, claimed that literature could be a means to create a collective consciousness by opening new mythical and magical perspectives on reality", and used his writings to inspire an Italian nation governed by fascism. Pietri was closely associated with Rowe's form of magic realism and knew Bontempelli in Paris. Rather than follow Carpentier's developing versions of the Latin American marvelous real, Usla Pietri's writings emphasize the mystery of human living amongst the reality of life. He believed magic realism was a continuation of the vanguardia or avant-garde modernist experimental writings of Latin America. Topic: <laughs> Major topics in criticism. Topic. Ambiguities in definition Mexican critic Luis Leal summed up the difficulty of defining magical realism by writing, "...if you can explain it, then it's not magical realism." He offers his own definition by writing, "...without thinking of the concept of magical realism, each writer gives expression to a reality he observes in the people." To me, magical realism is an attitude on the part of the characters in the novel toward the world or toward nature. Leal and Gunter both quote Arturo Usla Pietri, who described, Man as a mystery surrounded by realistic facts. A poetic prediction or a poetic denial of reality. What for lack of another name could be called a magical realism. It is worth noting that Pietri, in presenting his term for this literary tendency, always kept its definition open by means of a language more lyrical and evocative than strictly critical, as in this 1948 statement. When academic critics attempted to define magical realism with scholarly exactitude, they discovered that it was more powerful than precise. Critics, frustrated by their inability to pin down the term's meaning, have urged its complete abandonment. Yet in Pietri's vague, ample usage, magical realism was wildly successful in summarizing for many readers their perception of much Latin American fiction. This fact suggests that the term has its uses, so long as it is not expected to function with the precision expected of technical, scholarly terminology. Western and native worldviews 
the critical perspective towards magical realism as a conflict between reality and abnormality stems from the Western reader's disassociation with mythology, a root of magical realism more easily understood by non-Western cultures. Western confusion regarding magical realism is due to the conception of the real created in a magical realist text, rather than explain reality using natural or physical laws, as in typical Western texts, magical realist texts create a reality, in which the relation between incidents, characters, and setting could not be based upon or justified by their status within the physical world or their normal acceptance by bourgeois mentality." Guatemalan author William Spindler's article Magic realism, a typology, suggests that there are three kinds of magic realism, which, however, are by no means incompatible. European, metaphysical magic realism, with its sense of estrangement and the uncanny, exemplified by Kafka's fiction, ontological magical realism, characterized by matter of factness in relating inexplicable events and anthropological. Magical realism, where a native worldview is set side by side with the Western rational worldview. Spindler's typology of magic realism has been criticized as an act of categorization which seeks to define magic realism as a culturally specific project, by identifying for his readers those non -modern societies where myth and magic persist and where magic realism might be expected to occur. There are objections to this analysis. Western rationalism models may not actually describe Western modes of thinking and it is possible to conceive of instances where both orders of knowledge are simultaneously possible. <laughs> <laughs> Low real maravilloso Alejo Carpentier originated the term Lo Real Maravilloso, roughly, the marvelous real, in the prologue to his novel The Kingdom of This World. 1949. However, some debate whether he is truly a magical realist writer, or simply a precursor and source of inspiration. Maggie Bowers claims he is widely acknowledged as the originator of Latin American magical realism as both a novelist and critic. She describes Carpentier's conception as a kind of heightened reality where elements of the miraculous can appear while seeming natural and unforced. She suggests that by disassociating himself and his writings from Rowe's painterly magic realism, Carpentier aimed to show how by virtue of Latin America's varied history, geography, demography, politics, myths, and beliefs—improbable and marvelous things are made possible. Furthermore, Carpentier's meaning is that Latin America is a land filled with marvels, and that, "...writing about this land automatically produces a literature of marvelous reality." The marvelous may be easily confused with magical realism, as both modes introduce supernatural events without surprising the implied author. In both, these magical events are expected and accepted as everyday occurrences. However, the marvelous world is a unidimensional world. The implied author believes that anything can happen here, as the entire world is filled with supernatural beings and situations to begin with. Fairy tales are a good example of marvelous literature. The important idea in defining the marvelous is that readers understand that this fictional world is different from the world where they live. The marvelous one-dimensional world differs from the bidimensional world of magical realism, as in the latter, the supernatural realm blends with the natural, familiar world, arriving at the combination of two layers of reality, bidimensional. While some use the terms magical realism and low real maravilloso interchangeably, the key difference lies in the focus. Critic Louis Lille attests that Carpentier was an originating pillar of the magical realist style by implicitly referring to the latter's critical works, writing that, The existence of the marvelous real is what started magical realist literature, which some critics claim is the truly American literature. 
it can consequently be drawn that Carpentier's Lo real maravilloso is especially distinct from magical realism by the fact that the former applies specifically to America. On that note, Lee A. Daniel categorizes critics of Carpentier into three groups, those that do not consider him a magical realist whatsoever Angel Flores, those that call him a magico-realista writer with no mention of his low real maravilloso Gomez Gil, Jean Franco, Carlos Fuentes, and those that use the two terms interchangeably Fernando Alegria, Luis Leal, Emir Rodriguez Monegal. Topic: Latin American exclusivity. Criticism that Latin America is the birthplace and cornerstone of all things magic realist is quite common. Angel Flores does not deny that magical realism is an international commodity, but articulates that it has a Hispanic birthplace, writing that magical realism is a continuation of the Romantic realist tradition of Spanish language literature and its European counterparts." Flores is not alone on this front, there is argument between those who see magical realism as a Latin American invention and those who see it as the global product of a postmodern world. Gunter concludes Conjecture aside, it is in Latin America that magic realism was primarily seized by literary criticism and was, through translation and literary appropriation, transformed. Magic realism has taken on an internationalization, dozens of non Hispanic writers are categorized as such, and many believe that it truly is an international commodity. The Hispanic origin theory, if considering all citations given in this article, there are issues with Gunter's and other critics' Hispanic origin theory and conclusion. By admission of this article, the term magical realism first came into artistic usage in 1927 by German critic Franz Roh after the 1915 publication of Franz Kafka's novella, The Metamorphosis. Both visual and literary representations and uses of magic realism, regardless of suffix nitpicking. Russian author, Nikolai Gogol and his story, The Nose. 1835, is also a predecessor to the Hispanic origin theory. All this further called into question by Borges' critical standing as a true magical realist versus a predecessor to magic realism and how the dates of publications between Hispanic and European works compare. Magic realism has certainly enjoyed a «golden era» in the Hispanic communities. It cannot be denied that Hispanic communities, Argentina in particular, have supported great movements and talents in magic realism. One could validly suggest that the height of magic realism has been seen in Latin American countries, though, feminist readers might disagree. Virginia Woolf, Angela Carter, Toni Morrison and Charlotte Perkins Gilman being excellent critical challenges to this notion of Hispanic magic realism as a full and diversely aware aesthetic. Allende being a later contribution to this gender-aware discourse. Frida Kahlo, of course, being important to this as well but also at a later date than Woolf and Gilman. This feminist mapping, however, is unnecessary in identifying a basic truth. Kafka and Gogol predate Borges. They may each have their own forms of magic realism, but they are each by the broader definition solidly within this article's given identification. A highly detailed, realistic setting is invaded by something too strange to believe. This issue of feminist study in magic realism and its origination is an important discourse, as well. It should not be ignored. Given that magic realism, by nature of its craft, allows underrepresented and minority voices to be heard in more subtle and representational contexts, magic realism may be one of the better forms available to authors and artists who are expressing unpopular scenarios in sociopolitical contexts.
Again, Wolf, Allende, Carlo, Carter, Morrison and Gilman being excellent examples of diversity in gender and ethnicity in magic realism. To this end, Hispanic origin theory does not hold. Gender diversity aside, magic realism's foundational beginnings are much more diverse and intricate than what the Hispanic origin theory would suggest as defined in this article. Early in the article, we read a broader definition. Magic realism is what happens when a highly detailed, realistic setting is invaded by something too strange to believe. This too strange to believe standard being relative to European aesthetics, i.e., Wolf's, Kafka's, and Gogol's work. Later, we read another definition and seeming precedent to the Hispanic origin theory. Magical realism is a continuation of the Romantic realist tradition of Spanish language literature. This continuation is a subset of a broader magic realism definition and standard. The Hispanic continuation and Romantic realist tradition of Spanish language. Subset certainly identifies why magic realism took root and further developed in Hispanic communities, but it does not set a precedent for ground zero origination or ownership purely in Hispanic cultures. Magic realism originated in Germany as much as it did in Latin American countries. Both can claim their more specific aesthetics, but to identify the broader term of magic realism as being Hispanic is merely a theory unsupported by the citations within this article. Perhaps it is time to identify each as its own as part of a broader and less biased umbrella. Magic realism is a continued craft in the many countries that have contributed to it in its earliest stages. Germany being first and Latin American countries being a close second. There are certainly differences in aesthetics between European and Hispanic magic realists, but they are both equally magic realists. For this reason, the Hispanic magic realists should really have proper designation as such but not the overarching umbrella of the broader term as this article suggests. Postmodernism Taking into account that, theoretically, magical realism was born in the 20th century, some have argued that connecting it to postmodernism is a logical next step. To further connect the two concepts, there are descriptive commonalities between the two that Belgian critic Theo de Hayen addresses in his essay, Magical Realism and Postmodernism while authors such as Gunter Grass, Thomas Bernhardt, Peter Hanke, Italo Calvino, John Fowles, Angela Carter, John Banville, Michel Tournier, Giannina Brasci, Willem Brackman and Louis Ferrin might be widely considered postmodernist, they can just as easily be categorized magic realist. A list has been compiled of characteristics one might typically attribute to postmodernism, but which also could describe literary magic realism. Self-reflexiveness, metafiction, eclecticism, redundancy, multiplicity, discontinuity, intertextuality, parody, the dissolution of character and narrative instance, the erasure of boundaries, and the destabilization of the reader. To further connect the two, magical realism and postmodernism share the themes of post-colonial discourse, in which jumps in time and focus cannot really be explained with scientific but rather with magical reasoning, textualization of the reader, and metafiction. Concerning attitude toward audience, the two have, some argue, a lot in common. Magical realist works do not seek to primarily satisfy a popular audience, but instead, a sophisticated audience that must be attuned to noticing textual subtleties. While the postmodern writer condemns escapist literature like fantasy, crime, ghost fiction, he, she is inextricably related to it concerning readership. There are two modes in postmodern literature, one, commercially successful pop fiction, and the other, philosophy, better suited to intellectuals. 
a singular reading of the first mode will render a distorted or reductive understanding of the text. The fictitious reader such as Aureliano from One Hundred Years of Solitude is the hostage used to express the writer's anxiety on this issue of who is reading the work and to what ends, and of how the writer is forever reliant upon the needs and desires of readers the, market. the magic realist writer with difficulty must reach a balance between saleability and intellectual integrity. Wendy Farris, talking about magic realism as a contemporary phenomenon that leaves modernism for postmodernism, says, Magic realist fictions do seem more youthful and popular than their modernist predecessors, in that they often though not always, cater with unidirectional story lines to our basic desire to hear what happens next. Thus they may be more clearly designed for the entertainment of readers. Topic. Comparison with related genres When attempting to define what something is, it is often helpful to define what something is not. Many literary critics attempt to classify novels and literary works in only one genre, such as «romantic» or «naturalist», not always taking into account that many works fall into multiple categories. Much discussion is cited from Maggie Ann Bauer's book Magic Al Realism, wherein she attempts to delimit the terms magic realism and magical realism by examining the relationships with other genres such as realism, surrealism, fantastic literature, science fiction and its African version, the animist realism. Realism. Realism is an attempt to create a depiction of actual life. A novel does not simply rely on what it presents but how it presents it. In this way, a realist narrative acts as framework by which the reader constructs a world using the raw materials of life. Understanding both realism and magical realism within the realm of a narrative mode is key to understanding both terms. Magical realism relies upon the presentation of real, imagined or magical elements as if they were real. It relies upon realism, but only so that it can stretch what is acceptable as real to its limits." As a simple point of comparison, Rowe's differentiation between Expressionism and Post-Expressionism as described in German art in the 20th century, may be applied to magic realism and realism. Realism pertains to the terms, history, mimetic, familiarization, empiricism, logic, narration, closure ridden, reductive naturalism, and rationalization, cause and effect. On the other hand, magic realism encompasses the terms, myth, legend, fantastic, supplementation, defamiliarization, Mysticism, magic, meta narration, open ended, expansive romanticism, and imagination, negative capability. Topic: <laughs> Surrealism. Surrealism is often confused with magical realism as they both explore illogical or non-realist aspects of humanity and existence. There is a strong historical connection between Franz Rowe's concept of magic realism and surrealism, as well as the resulting influence on Carpentier's marvelous reality, however, important differences remain. Surrealism is most distanced from magical realism in that the aspects that it explores are associated not with material reality but with the imagination and the mind, and in particular it attempts to express the inner life and psychology of humans through art. It seeks to express the sub-conscious, unconscious, the repressed and inexpressible. Magical realism, on the other hand, rarely presents the extraordinary in the form of a dream or a psychological experience. To do so, 
Bowers writes, takes the magic of recognizable material reality and places it into the little understood world of the imagination. The ordinariness of magical realism's magic relies on its accepted and unquestioned position in tangible and material reality. Imaginary realism Imaginary realism is a term first coined by Dutch painter Carol Willink as a pendant of magic realism. Where magic realism uses fantastical and unreal elements, imaginary realism strictly uses realistic elements in an imagined scene. As such, the classic painters with their biblical and mythological scenes, can be qualified as imaginary realists. With the increasing availability of photo editing software, also art photographers like Karl Hammer and others create artistic works in this genre. Fabulism Fabulism traditionally refers to fables, parables, and myths, and is sometimes used in contemporary contexts for authors whose work falls within or relates to magical realism. Though often used to refer to works of magical realism, fabulism incorporates fantasy elements into reality, using myths and fables to critique the exterior world and offer direct allegorical interpretations. Austrian-American child psychologist Bruno Bertelheim suggested that fairy tales have psychological merit. They are used to translate trauma into a context that people can more easily understand and help to process difficult truths. Bertelheim posited that the darkness and morality of traditional fairy tales allowed children to grapple with questions of fear through symbolism. Fabulism helped to work through these complexities and, in the words of Bertelheim, "...make physical what is otherwise ephemeral or ineffable in an attempt of understanding those things that we struggle the most to talk about, loss, love, transition." Author Amber Sparks described fabulism as blending fantastical elements into a realistic setting. Crucial to the genre, said Sparks, is that the elements are often borrowed from specific myths, fairy tales, and folktales. Unlike magical realism, it does not just use general magical elements, but directly incorporates details from well-known stories. Our lives are bizarre, meandering, and fantastic, said Hannah Gillum of the Washington Square Review regarding fabulism. Shouldn't our fiction reflect that? While magical realism is traditionally used to refer to works that are Latin American in origin, fabulism is not tied to any specific culture. Rather than focusing on political realities, fabulism tends to focus on the entirety of the human experience through the mechanization of fairy tales and myths. This can be seen in the works of C.S. Lewis, who was once referred to as the greatest fabulist of the 20th century. His 1956 novel Till We Have Faces has been referenced as a fabulous retelling. This reimagining of the story of Cupid and Psyche uses an age-old myth to impart moralistic knowledge on the reader. A Washington Post review of a Lewis biography discusses how his work creates a fiction in order to deliver a lesson. Says the Post of Lewis, the fabulist illuminates the nature of things through a tale both he and his auditors, or readers, know to be an ingenious analogical invention." Italo Calvino is an example of a writer in the genre who uses the term fabulist. Calvino is best known for his book trilogy, Our Ancestors, a collection of moral tales told through surrealist fantasy. Like many fabulist collections, his work is often classified as allegories for children. Calvino wanted fiction, like folk tales, to act as a teaching device. Time and again, Calvino insisted on the educational potential of the fable and its function as a moral exemplum. 
wrote journalist Ian Thompson about the Italian fabulist, while reviewing the work of Romanian-born American theater director Andre Serban, New York Times critic Mel Gusso coined the term, "...the new fabulism." Serban is famous for his reinventions in the art of staging and directing, known for directing works like The Stag King and The Serpent Woman, both fables adapted into plays by Carl Gottsi. Gusso defined the new fabulism as taking ancient myths and turning them into morality tales. In Ed Mentor's book, The Magic Behind the Curtain, he explores Serban's work and influence within the context of American theater. He wrote that the fabulist style allowed Serban to neatly combine technical form and his own imagination. Through directing fabulist works, Serban can inspire an audience with innate goodness and romanticism through the magic of theater. The new fabulism has allowed Serban to pursue his own ideals of achieving on stage the naivete of a children's theatre," wrote Mentor. It is in this simplicity, this innocence, this magic that Serban finds any hope for contemporary theatre at all. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy Prominent English language fantasy writers have said that, magic realism is only another name for fantasy fiction. Jean Wolfe said, magic realism is fantasy written by people who speak Spanish, and Terry Pratchett said, magic realism is like a polite way of saying you write fantasy. However, Amaril Beatrice Chanady distinguishes magical realist literature from fantasy literature. The fantastic, based on differences between three shared dimensions, the use of antinomy, the simultaneous presence of two conflicting codes, the inclusion of events that cannot be integrated into a logical framework, and the use of authorial reticence. In fantasy, the presence of the supernatural code is perceived as problematic, something that draws special attention where in magical realism, the presence of the supernatural is accepted. In fantasy, while authorial reticence creates a disturbing effect on the reader, it works to integrate the supernatural into the natural framework in magical realism. This integration is made possible in magical realism as the author presents the supernatural as being equally valid to the natural. There is no hierarchy between the two codes. The ghost of Melchiades in Marquez's One Hundred Years of Solitude or the baby ghost in Toni Morrison's Beloved who visit or haunt the inhabitants of their previous residence are both presented by the narrator as ordinary occurrences. The reader, therefore, accepts the marvelous as normal and common. To Clark Zolotiu, the differentiating factor between the fantastic and magical realism is that in fantastic literature, such as Kafka's The Metamorphosis, there is a hesitation experienced by the protagonist, implied author or reader in deciding whether to attribute natural or supernatural causes to an unsettling event, or between rational or irrational explanations. Fantastic literature has also been defined as a piece of narrative in which there is a constant faltering between belief and non-belief in the supernatural or extraordinary event. In Lille's view, writers of fantasy literature, such as Borges, can create new worlds, perhaps new planets. By contrast, writers like Garcia Marquez, who use magical realism, don't create new worlds, but suggest the magical in our world. In magical realism, the supernatural realm blends with the natural, familiar world. This twofold world of magical realism differs from the onefold world that can be found in fairy tale and fantasy literature. Topic: <laughs> Animist realism. Animist realism is a term for conceptualizing the African literature that has been written based on the strong presence of the imaginary ancestor, the traditional religion and especially the animism of African cultures. 
The term was used by Pepitella and Harry Garuba to be a new conception of magic realism in African literature. Science fiction While science fiction and magical realism both bend the notion of what is real, toy with human imagination, and are forms of often fantastical fiction, they differ greatly. Bowers cites Aldous Huxley's Brave New World as a novel that exemplifies the science fiction novel's requirement of a rational, physical explanation for any unusual occurrences. Huxley portrays a world where the population is highly controlled with mood-enhancing drugs, which are controlled by the government. In this world, there is no link between copulation and reproduction. Humans are produced in giant test tubes, where chemical alterations during gestation determine their fates. Bowers argues that, the science fiction narrative's distinct difference from magical realism is that it is set in a world different from any known reality and its realism resides in the fact that we can recognize it as a possibility for our future. Unlike magical realism, it does not have a realistic setting that is recognizable in relation to any past or present reality. Major authors and works Although critics and writers debate which authors or works fall within the magical realism genre, the following authors represent the narrative mode. Within the Latin American world, the most iconic of magical realist writers are Jorge Luis Borges, Isabel Allende, and Nobel laureate Gabriel García Márquez, whose novel One Hundred Years of Solitude was an instant worldwide success. García Márquez confessed, "...my most important problem was destroying the line of demarcation that separates what seems real from what seems fantastic." Allende was the first Latin American woman writer recognized outside the continent. Her most well-known novel, The House of the Spirits, is arguably similar to García Márquez's style of magical realist writing. Another notable novelist is Laura Esquivel, whose Like Water for Chocolate tells the story of the domestic life of women living on the margins of their families and society. The novel's protagonist, Tita, is kept from happiness and marriage by her mother. Her unrequited love and ostracism from the family lead her to harness her extraordinary powers of imbuing her emotions to the food she makes. In turn, people who eat her food enact her emotions for her. For example, after eating a wedding cake Tita made while suffering from a forbidden love, the guests all suffer from a wave of longing. The Mexican Juan Rolfo pioneered the exposition through a non-linear structure with his short novel Pedro Paramo that tells the story of Kamala both as a lively town in times of the eponymous Pedro Paramo and as a ghost town through the eyes of his son Juan Preciado who returns to Kamala to fulfill a promise to his dead mother. In the English-speaking world, major authors include British Indian writer Salman Rushdie, African-American novelists Toni Morrison and Gloria Naylor, Latinos, as Anna Castillo, Rudolfo Anaya, Daniel Olivers, and Helena Maria Viramontes, Native American authors Louise Erdrich and Sherman Alexie, English author Louis de Berniers and English feminist writer Angela Carter. Perhaps the best known is Rushdie, whose language form of magical realism straddles both the surrealist tradition of magic realism as it developed in Europe and the mythic tradition of magical realism as it developed in Latin America." Morrison's most notable work, Beloved, tells the story of a mother who, haunted by the ghost of her child, learns to cope with memories of her traumatic childhood as an abused slave and the burden of nurturing children into a harsh and brutal society. Jonathan Safran Foer uses magical realism in exploring the history of the Stethal and Holocaust in Everything is Illuminated. 
In the Portuguese speaking world, Jorge Amado and Nobel Prize winning novelist Jose Saramago are some of the most famous authors of magic realism. In Norway, the writers Erik Fosnes Hansen, Jan Arstad, as well as the young novelist, Rune Salvesen, have marked themselves as premier writers of magical realism, something which has been seen as very UN Norwegian. Dimitris Lyakos's Pina Damni trilogy, originally written in Greek, is also seen as displaying characteristics of magic realism in its simultaneous fusion of real and unreal situations in the same narrative context. <laughs> <laughs> Visual art Historical development The painterly style began evolving as early as the first decade of the 20th century, but 1925 was when Magisha Realismus and Neue Sachlichke were officially recognized as major trends. This was the year that Franz Roh published his book on the subject, Nach Expressionismus, Magischer Realismus, Problemi der Neusten Europaschen Malerei, translated as After Expressionism, Magical Realism, Problems of the Newest European Painting, and Gustav Hartlaub curated the seminal exhibition on the theme, entitled simply Neue Sachlichkeit, translated as New Objectivity, at the Kunsthalle Mannheim in Mannheim, Germany. Gunther refers most frequently to the new objectivity, rather than magical realism, which is attributed to that new objectivity is practical based, referential to real practicing artists, while the magical realism is theoretical or critics' rhetoric. Eventually under Massimo Bontempelli guidance, the term magic realism was fully embraced by the German as well as in Italian practicing communities. New objectivity saw an utter rejection of the preceding Impressionist and Expressionist movements, and Hartlaub curated his exhibition under the guideline, only those who have remained true or have returned to a positive, palpable reality, in order to reveal the truth of the times would be included. The style was roughly divided into two subcategories, conservative, neo-classicist painting, and generally left-wing, politically motivated verists. The following quote by Hartlaub distinguishes the two, though mostly with reference to Germany, however, one might apply the logic to all relevant European countries. Quote, In the new art, he saw, a right, a left wing. One, conservative towards classicism, taking roots in timelessness, wanting to sanctify again the healthy, physically plastic in pure drawing after nature. After so much eccentricity and chaos, a reference to the repercussions of World War I. The other, the left, glaringly contemporary, far less artistically faithful, rather born of the negation of art, seeking to expose the chaos, the true face of our time, with an addiction to primitive fact-finding and nervous bearing of the self. There is nothing left but to affirm it the new art, especially since it seems strong enough to raise new artistic willpower. Both sides were seen all over Europe during the 1920s and 1930s, ranging from the Netherlands to Austria, France to Russia, with Germany and Italy as centers of growth. Indeed, Italian Giorgio de Chirico, producing works in the late 1910s under the style Art Metaphysica translated as metaphysical art, is seen as a precursor and as having an «influence» greater than any other painter on the artists of new objectivity." Further afield, American painters were later in the 1940s and 1950s, mostly coined magical realists. A link between these artists and the Neue Sachlichkeit of the 1920s was explicitly made in the New York Museum of Modern Art exhibition, tellingly titled, "'American Realists and Magic Realists." French magical realist Pierre Roy, who worked and showed successfully in the U.S., is cited as having "...helped spread Franz Roe's formulations..." to the United States. 
Topic: <laughs> Magic realism that excludes the overtly fantastic. When art critic Franz Roh applied the term magic realism to visual art in 1925, he was designating a style of visual art that brings extreme realism to the depiction of mundane subject matter, revealing an «interior» mystery, rather than imposing external, overtly magical features onto this everyday reality. Roh explains, we are offered a new style that is thoroughly of this world that celebrates the mundane. This new world of objects is still alien to the current idea of realism. It employs various techniques that endow all things with a deeper meaning and reveal mysteries that always threaten the secure tranquility of simple and ingenuous things. It is a question of representing before our eyes, in an intuitive way, the fact, the interior figure, of the exterior world. In painting, magical realism is a term often interchanged with post-expressionism, as Rios also shows, for the very title of Rose's 1925 essay was, "...magical realism, post-expressionism." Indeed, as Dr. Lois Parkinson Zamora of the University of Houston writes, Roh, in his 1925 essay, described a group of painters whom we now categorize generally as post-expressionists. Roh used this term to describe painting that signaled a return to realism after Expressionism's extravagances, which sought to redesign objects to reveal the spirits of those objects. Magical realism, according to Roh, instead faithfully portrays the exterior of an object, and in doing so the spirit, or magic, of the object reveals itself. One could relate this exterior magic all the way back to the 15th century. Flemish painter Van Eyck highlights the complexity of a natural landscape by creating illusions of continuous and unseen areas that recede into the background, leaving it to the viewer's imagination to fill in those gaps in the image, for instance, in a rolling landscape with river and hills. The magic is contained in the viewer's interpretation of those mysterious unseen or hidden parts of the image. Other important aspects of magical realist painting, according to ROH, include a return to ordinary subjects as opposed to fantastical ones, a juxtaposition of forward movement with a sense of distance, as opposed to Expressionism's tendency to foreshorten the subject, a use of miniature details even in expansive paintings, such as large landscapes. The pictorial ideals of Rowe's original magic realism attracted new generations of artists through the latter years of the 20th century and beyond. In a 1991 New York Times review, critic Vivian Rayner remarked that, John Stuart Ingall proves that magic realism lives in his virtuoso. Still life watercolors. Ingalls' approach, as described in his own words, reflects the early inspiration of the magic realism movement as described by Roh, that is, the aim is not to add magical elements to a realistic painting, but to pursue a radically faithful rendering of reality. The magic effect on the viewer comes from the intensity of that effort. I don't want to make arbitrary changes in what I see to paint the picture, I want to paint what is given. The whole idea is to take something that's given and explore that reality as intensely as I can. Topic: <laughs> Later development, magic realism that incorporates the fantastic. While Engel represents a magic realism that harks back to Rowe's ideas, the term magic realism in mid-20th century visual art tends to refer to work that incorporates overtly fantastic elements, somewhat in the manner of its literary counterpart. 
occupying an intermediate place in this line of development. The work of several European and American painters whose most important work dates from the 1930s through to the 1950s, including Bettina Shaw Lawrence, Paul Cadmus, Ivan Albright, Philip Evergood, George Tooker, Rico, even Andrew Wyeth, such as in his well known work Christina's World, is designated as magic realist. This work departs sharply from Rowe's definition, in that it according to artcyclopedia.com, is anchored in everyday reality, but has overtones of fantasy or wonder. In the work of Cadmus, for example, the surreal atmosphere is sometimes achieved via stylized distortions or exaggerations that are not realistic. Recent magic realism has gone beyond mere overtones of the fantastic or surreal to depict a frankly magical reality, with an increasingly tenuous anchoring in everyday reality. Artists associated with this kind of magic realism include Marcella Donazza and Gregory Gillespie. Artists such as Peter Doig, Richard T. Scott, and Will Tether have become associated with the term in the early 21st century. Topic: Painters. Topic: Film and television. Magical realism is not an officially recognized film genre, but characteristics of magic realism present in literature can also be found in many moving pictures with fantasy elements. These characteristics may be presented matter of factly and occur without explanation. Many films have magical realist narrative and events that contrast between real and magical elements, or different modes of production. This device explores the reality of what exists. Frederick Jameson, in On Magic Realism in Film, advances a hypothesis that magical realism in film is a formal mode that is constitutionally dependent on a type of historical raw material in which disjunction is structurally present. Like Water for Chocolate 1992 begins and ends with the first-person narrative to establishing the magical realism storytelling frame. Telling a story from a child's point of view, the historical gaps and holes perspective, and with cinematic color heightening the presence, are magical realist tools in films. Some other films that convey elements of magic realism are The Green Mile 1999, Amelie 2001, The Mistress of Spices 2005, Pan's Labyrinth 2006, Undertow 2009, Beautiful 2010, Beasts of the Southern Wild 2012, Birdman 2014, Bear 2015, a number of films by Woody Allen including The Purple Rose of Cairo 1985, Alice 1990, Midnight in Paris 2011, Scoop 2006, and To Roam with Love 2012. Additionally, most of the films directed by Terry Gilliam are strongly influenced by magic realism. The animated films of Hayao Miyazaki often utilize magic realism, and some of the films of Emir Kusturica contain elements of magical realism, the most famous of which is Time of the Gypsies. 1988. Magical realism is referred to in the 2015 Netflix series Narcos, which opens with a title card, from which the narrator reads. Magical realism is defined as what happens when a highly detailed, realistic setting is invaded by something too strange to believe. There is a reason magical realism was born in Colombia. <laughs> Video games and new media Early video games such as the 1986 text adventure Trinity combined elements of science fiction, fantasy and magic realism. In his essay Half Real, MIT professor and ludologist Jesper Jewell argues that the intrinsic nature of video games is magic realist. Point-and-click adventure games such as the 2017 release Memoranda have recently embraced the genre. 
2013 release Kentucky Route Zero is also deeply entrenched in magical realist tradition. In electronic literature, early author Michael Joyce's Afternoon, a story deploys the ambiguity and dubious narrator characteristic of high modernism, along with some suspense and romance elements, in a story whose meaning could change dramatically depending on the path taken through its lexias on each reading. More recently, Pamela Sacred perpetuated the genre through Le Voy de Lange, a continuation of the diary of Anne Frank written in French by a fictional character from her The Passengers Hypertext Saga. See also Central Conceit List of genres with reference to literature Fantasy, low fantasy Latin American boom Hallucinatory realism Hysterical realism M. Kondo Southern Gothic with reference to visual art Fantastic realism Metaphysical art New objectivity with reference to both Metarealism Postmodernism Romantic realism Surrealism <laughs>